It's late July and I just got some reports from buddies of mine that the fishing in Tofino is going off right now. So I figured it'd be a great idea to hop on the Kingfisher boat and head out for a solo fish. What I like about fishing by myself is it seems that all of your senses are just heightened. You are responsible for every action on the boat, from driving the boat, from watching your rod tips. So you are totally in tune with absolutely everything that's going on. It's not too often that I get to fish by myself, so I'm excited to see how I'm gonna handle the mayhem. All right, we're out here uh, just off the coast of, uh, of Tofino. We're gonna do a solo fish today, uh, which is always exciting. And um, we're heading to a spot that, that's been holding fish here for the past few days. And you can see in front of us, there's a few boats there. So one thing I like to do before I get into the mix with boats, especially when I'm fishing by myself, is just set up outside of where all the boats are. You don't wanna drive right into the middle or right to the edge. and you're trying to get your gear ready and you gotta focus on where all the boats are. So get your rods ready, your lines in before you get into the mix. So you got everything under control. You're dialed in, you know exactly what, you're, what you got your, your setup doing. And uh, that way you're not causing any confusion when you get in there, you're not cutting people off and you can just get in the, in the normal tack. So uh, today we're, we're gonna fish spoons to start. We've got a no bananas here. And uh, got a herring aid Ouija. You can see the Ouija's been working really well for me this summer. I mean, I should probably change it. It's got almost no paint on it, but it's working, so I'm not gonna change it. There's a few boats in there today, so... If we do get into some fish, it's always an adventure when you're fishing by yourself. Oh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> we'll see how she goes. And I'm fishing spoons, so... You know, leader length varies whether you're fishing hoochies or spoons, but typically I fish my spoons, you know, five to six feet, more, more towards six feet. Just kind of creates that slower roll. And uh, a lot of times you can control the roll of your, of your setup by how far you clip your, your flasher behind your, uh, your downrigger ball. So I normally like to put it about 15 feet roughly behind my downrigger ball. I just find that kind of works for me. Sometimes I'll go a little bit farther. All right, we're there. So a lot of times I see people fishing and they're trying to grab their line and, and they're pulling their rod in the boat like this, you know, and they're grabbing the rod like this. And, and I just find it just causes a cluster on the boat. First of all, if there's someone behind you, you can step on your rod, you can break it. Something I learned years ago, which is super helpful, is pull out a little extra line than what you want to clip it to, and then you just point your rod straight up the boat, okay? Straight up the boat like this, and your line will come right to your hand. And that way, you just put your rod in the rod holder, and now it's not laying on the boat behind you in the way, causing commotion where it doesn't need to be. So grab that line, okay? And get that rod down. So again, point the rod straight up the boat, in your hand, boom. Downrigger clip. We're in. Get that down, get fishing. As a fisherman, the biggest thing you want is your lines in the water as much as possible, especially when there's a bite. So you don't want to be, you know, taking your time, trying to get your line back in. Because sometimes, you know, if you're having a great day, yeah, fish will bite all day, but if you're having a a day where the fish are on and off, you might only have a short window to get your fish. So you want to be as efficient as possible. Get your lines in as quick as possible. All right, we're fishing. We're in the game here. There's a the fish. That's better. I was just, trying, just dealing with that other side and we looked over and we got a bouncing rod. <laughs> the gong show. The joys of fish solo fishing. A couple head shakes. Yeah, I don't think he's too big of a fish, but it's all right. It's always fun. Every fish is a good fish. Some are just bigger than others. There's the flasher. See what we got. Yeah, we got a little Chinook. 
pop this guy off. Come on in, buddy. Yeah, there's, there's another one there. Another bite. Oh, what? Oh, off the clip. There we go. So we got a double. So I'm gonna. I don't. They're not. Well, I'm gonna leave this one in the rod holder here. Well, gotta make a decision now. I don't. I don't think they're either monster fish, or I might have just lost this guy. I'll go let this guy go and see what happens over here. Do the dance. Son of a gun. Nice fish. Nice Chinook there, about 10 pounds. I know, bud. We're gonna let you go. We're just gonna pop you right off. There you go. And he's gone. Look at him head shake is still. He still thinks he's hooked. I pooched this fish here. We had a bite. I went over, tried. I had him on for a minute, but I had to make a decision. Went back to this fish and oh well. That's good though. Got a little, a little action. We'll get these back down right away. I think there's a few things about fishing as to why I enjoy it so much. First of all, I love being outdoors. I love being outside, kind of connecting with nature, and it really is kind of my way of meditating. I just feel at peace, I feel calm. I feel like I'm in a really good state of mind when I'm outside. Every time I get a bite, I just have a jolt of electricity that goes through my body. It's almost like pins and needles, like I'm just wired. You just don't know, okay, what What's biting? How big is the fish that's biting? How is this fight gonna go? Did it hook up? Do I have to hook him up? So you have multiple things that are going through your head. You know, every day is different, right? I mean, one day you could be on the fish and you can't do anything wrong, and the next day you go out there with a ton of confidence, and next thing you know, you're doing the same thing and, and you're getting the complete different results. So you, you gotta be able to adapt, you gotta be able to kind of change on the fly. There's peaks and valleys out there, but again, yeah, it all comes back to just being outside, being outdoors, and being in a really good state of mind. Right, so I was just fighting a fish on that side, and I saw this rod get bit. I, I don't think there's a fish on here, but sometimes you might hook a small fish, and it doesn't pull again, and you could be dragging it around for as long as you check your line. So. Um, I think it's always best to wait a couple minutes and then check that line. So a lot of guys will come over, pull the rod out of the rod holder, pop the clip, bring the downrigger up, and then have to reset everything when they get everything back to the surface. What I like to do is just keep the rod in the rod holder, bring my downrigger up and reel, and I'll bring that up to the surface. I can check. I see my flasher. I see that there's no fish there and I just send it right back down again. Whereas if I pop the clip, I have to rehook everything again, it just takes more time. So again, just pop that, dial that in, just reel it up. You know, sometimes if you're fishing deep, you can be dragging a rock fish around or whatever, so you need to check. All right, so I'm reeling up here. I've caught up to my rigger, so I'll bring it up a little bit more. Do I have a fish? No. I don't have a fish on. So now, instead of having to restart the whole process again of clipping my line onto my downrigger clip and, and, and starting the whole process again, I can send this down right away and I'm back in the game way faster. Way faster. Oh, look at that fish. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Now we're into it. We got two. We got a double header Chinook here. So now this is where it's important to put your heading hold on. Autopilot, heading hold, just like this. Boom, it's gonna hold us straight. I think we lost that one fish there, but I'll deal with this one. Jeez, that was awesome. That was awesome. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh no, he's on there. He's on there. I'll keep that drag pretty tight. We'll see if we can get them both. Oh my God, look at that thing pulling there. That rod. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness, here we go. Double header. Yes, both these fish were bucking. Oh, look at them, look at that one bucking. It's a nice fish. I'm gonna get this downrigger up. If 
feels like a decent fish, but this is on the braid and it's so sensitive. Every little move, he's just, every head shake is so sensitive. Great fight on it though. The other fish is up on the surface. I can see him there. I hope he just swims nicely and I can deal with this guy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna try and just get set up here. In case I, in case I choose to keep a fish, but I gotta get him in first. But that fish is just swimming right on the surface. Oh, right on the surface. He's cooperating. <laughs> oh yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Whew. All right. I get this guy in. Come on, buddy. You're coming right at us now. It's a little bit of mayhem on the back of the boat. See, that fish is still on there. He's just swimming. Getting close. I'll have a look at this guy here. Oh, yeah. Beautiful Chinook right there. Look at that guy. All right, I'm going to try and net this guy, and then if I get the other guy in, I'm going to release him. So it's going to be a bit of an adventure. He looks tired. Bring him. See? Problem. I touched him with the net. No good at all. That was not good. That was not good. <laughs> oh, okay, let's see what else we can do here. The other fish are still hanging out out there. I, I think we still have them. I just gotta get under him here. He's it! Woo! <laughs> what a gong show. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That, okay, now we're gonna go deal with the other fish real quick here. I'm gonna give this guy a quick little bonk. Great fight out of this guy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, fish. What's going on here? Oh, he's off. <laughs> he's off, that's all right. I'm exhausted right now. That was a crazy fight. A beautiful fish. Whew, too bad this guy didn't stick around, but I took a little bit too long on that guy there. But This guy was hooked well, man. He was just bark in line, but probably when I slowed the boat down, created some slack and, and lost him. But that was fun. That was things like that when th that happens on the boat. That's that's super memorable stuff, man. Like <laughs> that was tremendous. That was just awesome. Well, guys, here's uh, the fish I landed from my double header. Couldn't get to the other rod quick enough. That one was on for a couple minutes, but this this guy was a handful. Man, I, just trying to net him by myself there. I missed him twice, and he didn't like that. But we got him. But. One of the reasons why we kept this fish is it was a hatchery fish. You can see he's got no adipose fin there. So this is a absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous hatchery fish. He's, he's probably a 20 pound fish, but um, great fight. Uh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, memorable. That was, that's one I'll be, I'll be thinking about for a long time, that double header there. So that was really, really fun. I really love this Kingfisher GFX that we've been fishing on now for a couple years. And I have been in a Kingfisher boat personally since 2007. So it's been, you know, 16 years, almost 17 years fishing in a Kingfisher boat. I've been fortunate enough to take this boat on multiple adventures already. I've had it from Cayucat all the way down to Tofino. I've been able to take it up the inside. It just rides well, it handles the water well, it just tracks good, it disperses water great. It's got great headroom on the back. It's got a big dance floor on the back deck. And what makes it extra special is the ultra deck flooring that we have back there that is so comfortable. Being on the water all day long, is just, it makes it so much more comfortable for your knees and your back. You know, having that little absorption on the floor, I mean, at the end of the day, it really does help you physically. And it looks so good too, like it just looks sharp. So it's very, very practical stuff. It is just a super well-designed boat. Okay, guys, we're going to put this fish away into our uh, fish box here. And um, a good tip I also learned a couple years ago was bleed your fish out. It's better for the meat. And you know, a lot of people will just put that fish in there, and then they'll go get their knife, and they cut the gills. But a quick and, and easy way to do it is when you put your fish in the box, and you want to put them down gently, but just grab a hold of a gill plate, like get, reach into the gills, OK? When you drop that fish in there softly like this, slide them down and just pull up. Pull up, rip the gills, he's gonna bleed out. You don't need to get your knife, you don't need to worry about cutting, especially on a day where it's really lumpy. You're getting tossed back and forth. Super simple and, and easy. That fish is bleeding out right now.
He's on. Dude, he's on there. Oh, we got another one. Look it, look it. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna stay on this fish. You're getting a bite. But we got a spring here again for sh for shizzle, for sure. <laughs> oh, 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 that's going. It's gonna pop the clip. Yeah, that's a Chinook. We got double Chinooks here. We're gonna reel into him. Reel into him as fast as we can. He's there. Okay, we're gonna give him a little. We're gonna give him a little. Oh, I think he's gone. No, no, I'd... he's there. Hello, we're into him. Two again. Whoa, hey, come on now. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Oh my goodness. Look at that rod. I might have to grab that one. Oh Jesus, it's just bucking right now. Uh, okay, I'm gonna turn the boat here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, he's over top, he's over top. I gotta come over here now, I'm gonna change. Watch this move. We're gonna do this. <laughs> gonna do this. <laughs> oh, jeez. Here we go. Let's stay that way. So I just, <laughs> you gotta do the dance sometimes. Gotta do a bit of a dance. It's hooked perfectly right in the side of the mouth. Look at that beautiful salmon right there. Oh, jeez. Spectacular looking fish. They are truly, uh, truly warriors, these fish. Whoa. Yeah, there you go, perfect. Look at him, there he goes, no problem. That's cool. I said, well, we'll just pop over and let the other guy go. He cooperated nicely here, hanging out for us. Two great fish. Beautiful looking fish right here. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, perfect, right to the top of his nose there. Hooked great, look at him, I'm gonna let you go. Here you go. Thank you, see ya, bud. He's gone. <laughs> yes. Dude, two double headers in the last 15 minutes. That's exhausting. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun. A bit of a gong show on the boat, but those are the things you remember. And you appreciate these days because there's a lot of days you come out here and you can fish all day and you might not get a fish or you might get one bite or two bites, but when it's going off, it's just, it's not no place I'd rather be. We got another Chinook here. Just got him on the turn. He's gonna go head back on that tack that we've been heading on and getting him. It's gonna make this turn here and do a heading hold again. Oh geez, that him just jumped right out of the water there? That was nuts. What a day, what a day out here. It's been up. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What a smoke show. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> really? Oh, man. Jeez. Oh, what a run. <laughs> oh, no, he's head shaking down there. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Just incredible. And these spoons we've been using have just been hammering fish. We haven't, we made one change all day. I did have a needle fish down for a little bit there. Switched over to, uh, herring aid, a green pattern herring aid, and it's just been dynamite, and the, the no bananas with the glow back has been on fire all day too. Oh, the arm's getting sore. The arm is getting sore, that's a good good day. That's a good sign. Gorgeous fish here again. And no, I'll probably take this guy. He's a good size for eating. Netting fish is always the issue, obviously, when, there's, when you're by yourself, as we saw previously by me. Missing, oh geez, missing the first two times, but we'll see if I learned anything. All right, buddy. Thank you for that amazing fight. Get that underneath them. There we go. There we go. He's in the bag. Like, he's half in the bag, but we'll get him in. We'll get him in. There we go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, fish, for cooperating. Second fish of the day here, guys, that I kept. So uh, that's my limit for the day and released probably eight Chinook today. But today was just a spectacular day all around. The weather's been gorgeous. The fish have been cooperating. The quality of fish have been phenomenal. And uh, 
you know, it's a pretty nice office to have. So very, very appreciative. Today was a super special day. We didn't have all day to fish. We had a little bit of a window. When that first bite came, it was like, okay, it's gonna turn on here. And it just went absolutely bananas for three hours. It was organized chaos on the boat, like just absolute mayhem. Hook one up, the other rod's going, put that first one in the rod holder, run over to the second fish, hook him up, put him in the rod holder, make a decision which one you're gonna fight. I mean, it's pretty, pretty special to be living in a place on the west coast of Vancouver Island that offers you an opportunity like this to get in your boat, come out and experience something like this. It truly is a unique and special experience.